What is up, friends? Well, it is September, a beautiful, beautiful month. Fall is about to begin, and Nintendo Direct rumors are swirling around like plummeting leaves. September has long been one of the most consistent months for Nintendo Directs, and I hope this year that consistency remains the same. I'm here to discuss leaks, rumors, and give my own personal predictions for a hypothetical September Nintendo Direct. Rumors started at the end of last month about a Nintendo Direct occurring in September, but that wasn't that hard to predict because Nintendo Directs in September are almost always a given each year, and it is pretty easy to predict that there will be a Direct in September. In fact, it isn't even that hard to pin it down to an exact date. I think it is most likely that we will receive a Nintendo Direct on Wednesday, September 13th. That's just my guess, but it does seem pretty likely. Nintendo usually likes to have their Directs in the middle of September, and in the past, Nintendo has had four Nintendo Directs on September 13th. They seem to really like that date. And so it seems like a likely scenario. So, with a Nintendo Direct most likely occurring this week, I am ready to share my excitement by discussing recent rumors, leaks, and my own personal predictions. I always share my personal predictions on Random Ramblings, Kiro Tarakai's blog. But this time, I decided to share them here in a video because... I'm just overflowing with excitement for this Direct. So, before I get into my predictions, let me first talk about the recent leaks. Once again, I am about to discuss leaks. And so, if you wish to remain unspoiled by these leaks, and surprised by them if they are indeed true when they are announced in a Nintendo Direct, please, by all means, skip ahead to my predictions. I've added timestamps to the video so you can avoid any leaks if you so wish. And so, on to the leaks. Over the past few days, the same leaker that teased Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Pikmin 1 Plus 2 back in June before they were officially announced in Nintendo Direct has also shared some information about a September Nintendo Direct. I won't go into all the details here, but the leaks point to something related to F-Zero, a new Donkey Kong game, most likely a Mario vs. Donkey Kong game, and also a Wii and DS remake. In addition, this leaker is still sharing information about a Nintendo Direct. For example, Pioro later teased the name of the untitled Princess Peach game, with that teased title being Princess Peach Showtime. And so it seems like as the Direct is getting closer and closer, Pioro is continuing to leak information out. And so there's probably also leaks that I have not covered here, and the leaker is probably still sharing information as I speak. We shall see whether these rumors have any truth to them, but once again, this leaker does have a pretty good track record when it comes to Nintendo Direct leaks. I won't fully discuss these leaks here, because, I mean, if they're true, then I'll certainly discuss them. A uh, Anything F-Zero related is a miracle at this point, after the series hasn't really had a new game in 20 years. A new Mario vs. Donkey Kong game uh, would also be pretty nice, and in fact it was one of my bingo board predictions that didn't make the cut, so you heard it here. I uh, predicted it, but didn't put it on my bingo board. And also, uh, I mean, any sort of remakes and ports are always exciting, and we've been getting a lot of those, which kind of shows we're getting towards the end of the Switch's lifespan. But I'm not going to be uh, talking in-depth about those leaks and how exciting they are because once again if they prove true then i'll certainly be discussing them and also i'm not here to talk about the lifespan of the switch i'm here to uh mainly briefly touch upon those leaks and share my predictions for the nintendo direct now this is from my nintendo direct bingo board which i do for each nintendo direct and they're just my predictions for the direct 
ranging from very likely to incredibly impossible and just my wildest dreams. So let me share my bingo board predictions. First up, we have something very likely, WarioWare Move It. So this is a much more traditional WarioWare game that was announced back in June. And although WarioWare may not be my cup of tea, I'm excited that fans of this very wacky and bizarre series are getting another title on Switch. Though it is a bit sad that Wario Land is missing in action. Uh, and I also uh, kind of like the vacation vibes that this game is aiming for, although they would have been fitting uh, a few months ago rather than in November. But WarioWare Move It looks to be another strange yet satisfying entry in a strange yet satisfying series. Next, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Paris 2024. I'm beginning to think that this isn't going to happen. Usually they release Olympic-themed games the year before, and it would be kind of strange announcing it now and then just releasing it pretty soon after. And I'm just beginning to think that Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games 2020 was just a farewell for the series, not a uh, particularly mind-blowing farewell for the series, but one that took place in the homeland of both of those characters. Mario and Sonic won't be particularly missed if it doesn't make a return, but I just really want to see Mario and Sonic face each other in a break dancing battle for the ages. Because that really is an Olympic sport that is taking place at Paris 2024. Breakdancing. Next is Just Like Warrior War Move It, a very likely prediction. Although I'm not sure how much of this game we'll see. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which of course obviously looks wonderful. Back at the end of last month, a Super Mario Bros. Wonder Direct occurred, so I don't think they'll focus as much on this game as they would have if there hadn't been that Direct. If Super Mario Bros. Wonder is not going to be the main focus of this Direct, what is? I will be happy to see more of this wondrous game, because it's such a refreshing reinvigoration and reinvention of side-scrolling Mario, one that it's needed for almost two decades now. And I keep on giving some uh, ones that are very likely to be shown. This next one is also very likely to be shown. S the Super Mario RPG Remake. I love Super Mario RPG both as a Mario-themed role-playing adventure and as the forefather of all the Mario RPGs I love so much. And I am so excited to experience it in an improved art style that is still so faithful to the original. I'm especially excited about the remastered soundtrack, and I'm hoping here that we get some details on what is new in this remake, what new mechanics and new features might have been added to this Mario RPG classic. And hopefully this remake will signal the start of an improved relationship between Nintendo and classic Mario RPGs. This isn't the first time I'm going to say it during my Nintendo Direct predictions, but hashtag remaster thousand year door. Next up, I brought a uh, slight bit of a blast from the past by predicting some Zelda ports, because those have been a mainstay of my bingo boards before Tears of the Kingdom had a release date and a title. And Tears of the Kingdom has now been out for a while, uh, and so it's time to resume baseless speculation about Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD ports coming to the Switch. I mean, it is a pretty logical move on the part of Nintendo. It would make a lot of people happy and would make a Nintendo a lot of money with not much effort at all. But who knows? Nintendo never really seems to do what is logical and makes sense. Perhaps they'll show us something else entirely. A port of A Link Between Worlds, maybe? Or an entirely new game, such as uh, maybe, I don't know, Tantalizing Tingle's Journey of Enlightenment. Wouldn't that be crazy if the Tingle games made a comeback? That would that would be completely unexpected. And here is yet another likely prediction, because, I don't know, I've realized this correlation that whenever I make likely predictions on a bingo board, I'm more likely to get a bingo. Strange correlation. But I'm expecting new NSO games in this Direct. 
And actually, even though I say this is pretty likely, it may not happen, maybe? Because we have been getting a lot of NSO games recently. I mean, usually we get drip-fed drip very slowly, but this summer we've been getting a lot of surprise NSO announcements. We got Excite Bike 64, and then only a week later, four new NSO games, three of which had never been released outside of Japan before. So uh, NSO is really ramping up in value, and I'm glad that I recently subscribed to it because it's offering a, a lot of legacy content. But, of course, there is still a lot of legacy content missing. And I can't help but also ask, as many others are asking, where in the name of MC Ballyho is Mario Party 3? They said it was coming to NSO a year ago, and it still hasn't come. But also, I can't wait for more of the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games to be added, especially Golden Sun. But most of all, I cannot wait for Kirby and the Amazing Mirror to come to NSO, because it would it'd be such a blast to play with the other authors of Kira Tarkai. Now that playing that multiplayer isn't a huge hassle with all the link cables and systems. So yes, hopefully we will get new NSO games in this direct. My next prediction on the bingo board is Sanic. Sanic the hot dog. I'm sure we'll see Sonic Superstars featured in this direct as it uh, does come out pretty soon next month. In fact, as you may know, it comes out the same exact week as Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Personally, if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely choose Super Mario Bros. Wonder. But Superstars still looks like a somewhat stellar game. But I don't know how much I trust Arzest. They have ruined entries in more than one of my favorite series, after all. Oh, Arzest. But moving on to something a bit more positive. I'm sure that this Direct will have something unexpected. This is something that almost every single Direct has. There are very few times that I walk away from a Direct without at least one surprise, one game, one announcement that completely took me off guard. Something that just came out of the blue, surprising and startling, so many, myself included. I mean, I experienced a lot of that in uh, the February Direct with Metroid Prime Remastered just shadow dropping. Directs are always so exciting because you never know what you're going to get. Nintendo is an unpredictable company, and this unpredictability is at its best during Nintendo Directs. Next up is Detective Pikachu Returns. This game was announced almost half a decade ago, and it's almost here. It's coming out in just a bit, and it honestly looks a bit underwhelming. Uh, of course, it's a Pokemon spinoff. You, you can't set your standards too high, and I'm probably not going to play it. I've only played one Pokemon game in my entire life, and I don't really have too much of an idea of what spinoffs fans like and dislike. But hopefully this new game will make at least one person happy. And it's pretty likely that we'll see it at this Direct, though. I'm not sure. It's it's really weird. Sometimes Nintendo Directs just feature Pokemon games. Most of the time, they're just exclusive to Pokemon Presents. I'm not really sure what the rules and boundaries are, but it could be featured. Uh, but of course, with Detective Pikachu Returns coming out, I assume that we're not getting the port of the first game that was announced alongside this sequel when it was initially announced without a title. Who knows? Next up, the Splatoon 3 DLC. It is time. It's time for Side Order, the eagerly anticipated final half of Splatoon 3's DLC. Let's see whether or not Side Order can live up to Octo Expansion. From the teaser that we have received, it looks to be a very interesting concept, and we'll see where it takes the story. Once again, let's see if it can live up to Octo Expansion. Next up, something that is extremely likely. In fact, I would say that this is impossible not to appear in a direct. It's third-party titles that I 
do not care about. It always happens. My tastes are relatively limited. Uh, and there's a lot of announcements that I'm like, I've never heard of this series, but I guess someone enjoys it. And I'm happy for uh, anyone who enjoys the announcements that I myself do not enjoy. I love certain series, and it's, of course, not practical uh, for me to be a fan of every single series in existence, uh, because I, I have my tastes, and I have the types of gameplay that I like, though over these past few years I have been doing my best to expand my horizons. But, once again, there's going to be lots of third-party titles in any direct that I do not care much about, but I'm sure someone does care about them, and I'm happy for whoever that is. Next up, the Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon port. I was pretty surprised by the announcement of an enhanced port of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon back in June, but I'm still excited for it. I know, I know, it is not the most highly regarded title in the series. And out of all the 3DS games, it was weird that Nintendo chose this one specifically to bring over to the Switch, but I guess they saw how su surprisingly successful Luigi's Mansion 3 was and decided to bring this one over. I'm excited though, because I've never played Dark Moon, and I'm excited to experience this missing piece in my knowledge of the Luigi's Mansion series. Port more 3DS games to the Switch Nintendo that will fill out the final few months and years of the Switch's lifespan, and it will make me happy, because I still don't have a 3DS, and there's a lot of games on there that I still have never experienced. My next prediction. More Pikmin, please. Pikmin 4 is out now. Shouldn't I be satisfied with that? Well, I'm a Pikmin fan. I'm never satisfied. My hunger for Pikmin is insatiable. Pikmin 4 is a really good game, but the world could always use some more Pikmin. It's a packed game, it's a really good game, and it doesn't really need DLC at all. But DLC would be a very nice addition while we wait another decade for Pikmin 5. I just want some more Pikmin, please. And a prediction from a, another series whose fans are a bit starved, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes Remastered. Metroid Prime is such a spectacular series, and after how mind-blowing Metroid Prime Remastered looked, it would be fantastic to receive the rumored remaster of Echoes, and Corruption as well, if Nintendo is feeling generous. It would be nice to receive some more Metroid Prime ports while we wait for Metroid Prime 4. It doesn't even have to be a remaster, they can just put them to the Switch as ports, just like they did with Pikmin 1 and 2, and, and it would still make fans happy. And I said it wouldn't be the only time I said this during my predictions. Hashtag remaster thousand year door. Remaster Thousand Year Door, Nintendo. Remaster Thousand Year Door. Rumors of a remaster of this game finally happening were being whispered earlier this year, and I do not believe them in the slightest. But nonetheless, Remaster Thousand Year Door, please. There's no easy way for so many, such as myself, to play this acclaimed title. It's never going to happen, is it? Nintendo just seems to really hate classic Paper Mario for some reason. Next is Metroid Prime 4. Where is it? Where could it be? We are primed and ready for Metroid Prime 4, which was announced over six years ago. Development on the game restarted four years ago. And I think it's about time that we see something of this game. What has Retro carefully crafted for its dedicated fans? They were able to create such a masterpiece with Metroid Prime Remastered. And now that Nintendo has actually acknowledged the existence of the Prime series, there is hope. But I say that before every Direct. Why do I torture myself so with these predictions? Moving on from these two fairly unlikely predictions, here is a extremely likely prediction 
Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, the final wave of the Booster Course Pass DLC. Probably will not be fully revealed during a Nintendo Direct, they'll probably save that for later, but they'll probably show off at least some of what this last wave has to offer. What will those final four tracks be? How strong will the conclusion of this unexpected and ultimately enjoyable DLC be? It's probably going to end with a rainbow road, but the question is, which rainbow road? My fingers are crossed for the Wii version, but I would be happy with the one from Double Dash as well, or even the one from Super Circuit. Let's see what the final few tracks for the Mario Kart game that will never, ever die will be. We've had Mario Kart 8 for a decade, and it's about time to move on to something new. My next prediction is a 3DS port. I already said that I just want Nintendo to port more 3DS games. They completely surprised me with the unexpected re-releases of Miitopia in 2021 and Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon next year. And I just want to see more 3DS games given new life on the Nintendo Switch. Once again, Nintendo seems to be putting on a lot of ports and remakes to fill in the schedule during this end of the Switch's lifespan. And 3DS had so many memorable titles that I and others would like to experience. The 3DS had so many memorable titles, many of which I have never experienced. So, come on Nintendo, put out Kirby Triple Deluxe Deluxe. I know you want to. Next up, I have three unlikely predictions, one of which is immensely unlikely. First, a new Star Fox game with the title of Star Fox Retold for the Thousandth Time. The Star Fox game would be a retelling of Star Fox Zero, which was a retelling of Star Fox 64, which was a retelling of the original Star Fox. Star Fox likes to reuse its stories a lot. But, despite this flaw, it would be nice to see another Star Fox game. I'm worried that Star Fox Zero scared off Nintendo from the franchise, but this is one of Nintendo's big legacy series. And it may skip this generation, but I'm hoping it doesn't. And now for what is probably the most unlikely prediction in my Nintendo Direct Bingo board. It is the most unlikely prediction in all of my Nintendo Direct Bingo boards, because I always predict this, and it never happens. Mother 3. Need I say anything more? It would be such an excellent addition to NSO, and it would be such a surprise and joy. But I'm not keeping my hopes up. One of the only reasons that we got Earthbound Beginnings was because it was already translated. They just never released it. That is not the case for Mother 3. So, I'm not keeping my hopes up. I never have for Mother 3. But, if it ever happens, I promise that I will share my favorite Mr. Saturn quote. So look forward to that if it ever at long last happens. Next, a unlikely but not quite as unlikely prediction. Arms 2. If you'll excuse my pun, this prediction is a bit of a stretch, but I would love to see it. ARMS was introduced as a new Nintendo IP at the beginning of the Switch's lifespan, and it would be slightly disappointing to see it die out, especially after it was represented in Super Smash Bros. The core gameplay of ARMS is really great. The visual style is really great. The music is really great. And the sequel could expand on all of that by providing more content than what the somewhat bare-bones original game did. ARMS was one of the highlights of the Switch's first summer, and it would be fitting if next year its sequel could be the highlight of what could very well be the Switch's final summer. But that doesn't seem too likely to me. If they ever do make an ARMS 2, it's probably coming to the Switch's successor. The first of my final three predictions is Tears of the Kingdom DLC. I still have the smallest sliver of hope that this massive masterpiece shall be made a bit more massive with a DLC expansion. 
Yes, Awanuma said recently in an interview that there are currently no plans for DLC for this game. Even if it doesn't happen here, I don't think it ever will happen. The game is already enormous enough, but it is missing a few things, like Master Mode and some sort of ultimate reward. And these things will be really missed in the long term if Tears of the Kingdom doesn't get DLC. If it did somehow get DLC, I would uh, expect it to have a similar setup to Breath of the Wild's DLC with the first wave being mainly gameplay DLC and the second wave being story DLC. There's still a lot of unanswered questions in Tears of the Kingdom story, like where did the Sheikah technology go? And who the ancient sages even were. And it, it, it will be a bit disappointing if we never receive answers to those questions. I have immensely enjoyed Tears of the Kingdom. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And I would immensely enjoy DLC for it. But once again, it's probably not going to happen after what Onuma said in that interview. But he did say that there currently are no plans for Tears of the Kingdom DLC. Emphasis on the currently. <laughs> nah, I'm not keeping my hopes up. I think all we're going to get is those Amiibo releasing at the end of this year. But who knows? My penultimate prediction is Super Princess Peach 2. I am joking about that title, of course. It's... It's not the actual name of this game. The actual name of this game is Untitled Princess Peach Game. It's hard to discuss this game much because we know next to nothing about it. As I said, we don't even know its title officially yet. We have no idea what the gameplay will be like, nor what the plot will be like. But at least the art style looks appealing with the setting of a stage play. And it does look like a promising game. We know so very little about this game, uh, and because of that, I'm pretty interested to see what Nintendo has to show for this game, if they do show it at this Direct, perhaps with a title reveal, and a release date, or at least a release window. But we'll see. My final prediction. A Mario and Luigi reboot. We're coming up on the 20th anniversary of the Mario and Luigi series. But I don't think Nintendo is going to celebrate in any way. With Alpha Dream bankrupt, the future of my favorite Super Mario subseries is uncertain. <clears throat> but with Super Mario RPG getting a remake, Nintendo no longer seems quite as adverse to Mario RPGs as they used to be. The future does not look too bleak for both Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi. They would need to find a new team to do it, once again, as Alpha Dream is bankrupt. And I am not getting my hopes up, but I would love anything Mario & Luigi, from a reboot to a remake, from a port to a reimagining. I just want some uncertainness about the future of this series to be resolved, because if it's gone for good, then it will certainly be missed. And so, that was the last of my Nintendo Direct predictions. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video discussion about the recent rumors, speculation, and once again my own personal predictions. Because I love discussing this sort of stuff that gets me excited and energized for Nintendo Directs. They're always an extremely enjoyable time, full of surprises and unpredictability and I cannot wait for this September Nintendo Direct. I have been FavoDX of Kiro Tarakai, and I will see you, hopefully, later this week for a Nintendo Direct. Thank you so much for listening. It's Nintendo Direct time, baby.